how to build confidence. In this video, I'm gonna talk about seven domains or sources of confidence from a Christian coach's perspective. First, let's start with the self-reflective question. And you may even wanna close your eyes for this. Can you recall a time when you felt confident? I'd like you to call forth that memory and consider what was going on in that moment. What were you doing? Who were you with? What made you feel confident? And what did feeling confident feel like? How do you know you were confident? So that's a lot of questions. But now that you have that in mind, we have an idea of what confidence is like for you. So now let's talk about where confidence comes from. Consider that there are two kinds of sources of confidence. There are external sources of confidence, things on the outside of us, like our physical appearance, social status, validation that we receive from others, or perhaps money or possessions that we've acquired. And then there are internal sources of confidence. And this is what we'll focus on in this video. While external sources of confidence can be helpful, we want to focus on deriving our confidence from things that are more reliable. The externals will always change and fluctuate. So we wanna focus on those internal sources of confidence that remain more stable over time. So that's not to say that we should expect to always feel confident. Our confidence and even our faith may always waver and that's okay. In fact, I wanna take a moment to challenge the idea that a lack of confidence or a bout of imposter syndrome is a negative thing. What if we could reframe it in the positive? What if a lack of confidence or feeling of imposter syndrome can be used to inspire humility, to inspire gratitude for where we are in life, gratitude for the support that we've received along the way? So maybe these feelings arise to keep us in check lest we become arrogant or forget to be mindful of our shortcomings? What if a lack of confidence exists to inspire humility, a recognition that we aren't perfect, that there's room for improvement, and that we do need help at times? So I invite you to consider that a dose of imposter syndrome or a momentary lack of confidence could be just what is needed. Now scripture has something to say about this. Romans 12, three. For through the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. And furthermore, and perhaps a more challenging verse, Philippians 2, 3, 4. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility consider one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. With that said, here are seven sources of confidence that we can be grateful for, beginning with, and you may have guessed, number one, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our ultimate source of confidence. Whatever confidence that we have in this life is by his grace. We are called to rely on him and not on ourselves alone. John 15, four to five, remain in me and I in you, just as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, but must remain in the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. 
I am the vine, you are the branches, the one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. But isn't that great news? We don't have to rely on ourselves. We don't have to always be confident. We who are imperfect and are prone to mistakes, but we have help from the Most High. When we feel weak, we can remind ourselves. Philippians 4.13 I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And Isaiah 40.31 Yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. Scriptures tell us clearly and directly where we should place our confidence. Psalm 71 5 For you are my hope, Lord God. You are my confidence from my youth. And further, Psalm 78 7 So that they would put their confidence in God and not forget the works of God but comply with his commandments. So can you look back on the works of God in your life, what God has done for you, and find renewed confidence in that? Proverbs 3.26 For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Confidence is faith in Christ, in the blood spilt by Christ, out of his passion for our sake. Hebrews 10, 19 to 22. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he inaugurated for us through the veil, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let's approach God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith. We can also have confidence in prayer. 1 John 5.14 This is the confidence which we have before him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So everything else follows and is secondary to Christ because every other source of confidence that we have has been given by him. So number two, our next internal source of confidence is self-worth. Self-worth is a sense of knowing that we are valuable as human beings and God's creation. We were once children and we are forever God's children, and therefore God values us. Psalm 127.3 Behold, children are a gift of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. So each and every one of us is a reward in God's eyes. We only need to look to the cross for evidence of God's love for us. John 3:16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. And number 3, our next internal source of confidence is purpose. Have you ever noticed that when you feel like you have a sense of purpose that you feel more confident? God values us and has a purpose for each of us. Ephesians 2.10 For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. And Mark 10.45 For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve 
and to give his life as a ransom for many. So when we are giving and doing for others, we feel a sense of purpose. Matthew 25, 35 to 40. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. Naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? And when did we see you as a stranger and invite you in, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Truly I say to you, to the extent that you did it for one of the least of these brothers or sisters of mine, you did it for me. <clears throat> so where is God calling you to serve? And number four, our next internal source of confidence is character. Do we believe that we're good people? Do we show up in the world in an honorable way, in a way that we can feel proud of? So how can we be people of good character? And what are some good character traits? So we can look to scripture for the answer. Galatians 5, to 23. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And what does it mean to be a loving person? 1 Corinthians 13, 4. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not jealous. Love does not brag. It is not arrogant. So this gives us an idea of the kind of character that God calls us to have. And wherever we may fall short out of sin, we can go to God to repent, ask for forgiveness, and strive to live a better character going forward. Number five, our next internal source of confidence is competency. So what are we good at? What God-given skills, gifts, and talents do we have? God teaches that he's given each of us different gifts and different roles to serve. Romans 12, 4 to 8. For just as we have many parts in one body and all the body's parts do not have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ and individually parts of one another. However, since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to use them properly. If prophecy in proportion to one's faith, if service in the act of serving, or the one who teaches in the act of teaching, or the one who exhorts in the work of exhortation, the one who gives with generosity, the one who is in leadership with diligence, the one who shows mercy with cheerfulness. So what do you feel competent at? And number six, our next internal source of confidence is resilience. So do we know that we can handle struggle, that we can persevere through trial? Do we challenge ourselves to grow? James 1.12 Blessed is a man who perseveres under trial, for once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. So what difficulties have you overcome? How did you overcome them? How did you grow through the challenge? Do you trust that you're able to make it through difficult times? So remember these things when you're feeling a lack of confidence. 
And number seven, our last internal source of confidence is fulfilling relationships. We are social creatures. We are not meant to live in isolation. Do you feel connected to others in meaningful ways? This is also related with having a sense of purpose. We need to be responsible to others in order to feel purposeful. And this gives our relationships meaning. So we need loving relationships in our lives. Jesus says in John 15, 12, this is my commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. And furthermore, Romans 12, 10 says, be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Give preference to one another in honor. And 1 John 4, 7, Beloved, let's love one another, for love is from God, and everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. So these are seven sources of confidence from a Christian coach's perspective. If you appreciated this message, please like, share, and subscribe. And otherwise, I thank you for watching and God bless.